Paul Tylak, welcome to Bookshot. Thank you very much, brother, for, for jumping on board. Happy to be here, Tom. I'd forgotten yeah. how amazingly jealous I am of your great teeth. You have a fantastic <laughs> teeth. They're gorgeous. Are they all your own? Uh, no, some of them are borrowed from friends, like just like uh, after fights and stuff. <laughs> but uh, just because uh, they feel guilty, you have to beat me up. But uh, yeah, no, they are. Yeah, uh, I did, actually I have a chip out of one tooth, and I I got an actual filling in it, which made it look perfectly straight. And the night I got the filling, I ate something like just like my Cambridge's toasted or something and it, it dropped right out of it and I rang up the dentist the next day I was just you know the way you don't want to say like you know like to a mechanic you might say yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, know, yeah, that's, yeah yeah that car just stopped on the motorway that you gave me back yesterday but this like I, so I just said to the secretary in there uh, yeah that tooth that you the chip the filling you put in has come out straight away just so you know it's just like, just so you know, because <laughs> they're not going to do anything about it. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not taking a bad job Charlie. now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've great set of chompers there. Uh, they're they're all right. That's all there. It's all right. They wouldn't be up to Paul Tyler standards or anything like that. The um, the last obviously. time I think we, I think we yeah, obviously I like that just for the audio listeners in case you're wondering. They're obviously not up to Paul Tyler standards. They're, that's actually a, a, a measurement of teeth uh, perfection. Is the it's like the Scoville scale for for chilies. It's yeah the, the Paul Tylek scale of great teeth. And well, apparently I'm half um, Sri Lankan and half Irish. I don't mean apparently I am that. But, <laughs> I was wondering. Yeah. I was going. Oh, <laughs> did, does he want me to confirm it for him or something? I don't. <laughs> no, that's like saying uh, yeah. My name's Paul Tylek. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, no, but uh, uh, Indo Indo Irish <laughs> Indo Celtic is the strongest teeth you can have i remember looking that up years ago or just discovering that years ago hearing it somewhere and going yes i'm i'm the indo celtic because i think i think celtic teeth on their own is quite bad or can be quite bad and you know like um anglo-saxon then is after that but if you are a mixture of like indo celtic basically is the best teeth you can get for <laughs> Like the killer bees were really nice bees mixed with really angry African bees and that they became just, they were supposed to be better for honey, but they turned out to just be killer bees. Just going around with knives and shit. Just fucking. Yeah. <laughs> See, I always promise people, Paul, that they'll learn nothing on my podcast and we're not five minutes in and all of a sudden we've learned that Sri Lankan cross with Irish teeth make the greatest teeth. Yeah, well, Indo-Celtic, yeah. I mean, uh, let's not exclude the one billion Indians who are probably in the category as well. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they'll probably get fairly pissed off about the whole thing. I think the uh, the last time we were chatting, um, the last time we pro probably, probably hung out was nearly Selbridge, was it? I'd yeah. say we did a gig in Selbridge in that kind of rough old pub. Yes, yes. Uh, I probably, I don't really remember it because it was probably a bad gig for me. <laughs> oh, I, listen, it was it was going that way for a couple of weeks before that. It was, yeah, it is. I think it we did one up north as well somewhere and you stormed it. it was so like, um, I can't remember where it was. It might, have just, it might have just been Monaghan, but it might have been further north into the actual north. I'm, I'm not sure. But um, it was a pretty dodgy kind of vibe in the bar as well but you pulled the whole thing together you were emceeing and you you slaughtered it yeah it's it was, normally when they throw me in the rougher the environment the better for me paul more than anything it's that's that's what i found out the unfortunately yeah. like nicely groomed great audiences you know with well-prepared people and you know with their their teeth all in the right direction normally don't suit me unfortunately it's just wild Fucking you like a bit sandwiches. of banter, a bit of madness from the crowd. Yeah, I didn't of... realize I liked it, but it's it seems yeah. to be just you know I'm in sync with those people for one reason or another. I I can't help it. It's, yeah. the, it's the absolute lack of Indo. That's what I'm missing. I'm missing Indo crossover with me. It's just pure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more inbred than in Indo. Indo. Well, I'd say as well all those the you know the hecklers mates love when they get slagged. You yeah. know, which you, you can provide. Very well, and with your comebacks and all, you know. Yeah, we were down. Where were we? Was it down? Was it Joe? Joe was on. Yeah, myself. And it was during a lift in, like we went to level two or whatever. We were in Limerick, and Limerick is oh. normally grand because yeah, they're nearly a bit shy in that they they're new. They're still a lot of them are new to comedy, but there was these couple of blokes, this gang of blokes in the corner who had, um, 
I'd say they'd read the first half page of how to behave like an asshole at a comedy club. Um, right. And they just kept on shouting shit and just wrecking everybody's head. And in fairness, Carl was hosting and he wasn't putting these fellas away. Like, and I just got really uh, angry. Okay. And there's a girl on who's really good, but she was just struggling because they were giving her shit too. Like, and I, just, uh, okay. I said it to the manager. I went, man, look, are you going to say something or do you want me? And he went, oh God, that'd get a bit awkward, wouldn't it? I went, no. No, because yeah. they're locals. I went, okay, well, I am going to have to verbally, you know, rape them all in front of your staff. Like, he went, yeah, yeah. What, what the? And I just went to, and I I didn't realize. I'm glad how you much... said verbally. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but it, it was probably as well uh, people hadn't been out in ages. and They probably went nuts, did they, when they came out? It was the or, no, for 90% of the audience, they were very well behaved, but it was just these mm. lads were like, just... And the problem was their, their heckles were rubbish. They were absolutely mm. rubbish. They were miles behind things, you know what I mean? They were... They, they, yeah. uh, they hadn't you, been trained properly. No, it, that's yeah. why, you know, they only read half a page of the fucking start of the book, so... But the I didn't realise how much I enjoyed shouting abuse at grown yeah. men i i didn't really and i really really enjoyed that now so uh, yeah it was also for me it was probably you know after after the lockdown for so long it was like this is this is therapy just shouting in public yeah i think yourself and carl are the best at that in terms of mcs given as good as they get like and just like destroying people <laughs> yeah it's it's uh yeah it's it's a natural born thing the you played on that i remember how many how many instruments? Because I remember asking you, how many instruments do you play? One. You're... <laughs> <laughs> I, I make it look like loads. No, uh, well, I, I just uh, can play a little bit of rhythm guitar and I only learn enough to do like a parody of a song or enough for a joke. Okay, like, right. Because I'm not like, I wouldn't be a musical comedian at all, but I... Like, I, I think that's a bit, gets very self-indulgent when you sing a whole fucking song. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think if there's a joke to be made about a song, you know, if you get like just two verses, you know, like, I know it sounds funny, but I just can't scan your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it, that's it. There You get yeah. your laugh and then you go into, so it's kind of in, labor intensive in that you have to learn the proper chords for that. But you only have to learn like two verses, basically. <laughs> And it, uh, that's really valid. Yeah, I never really. Yeah, because I wonder why I, I would wear off every so often, you know, when it's somebody's that you see the guitar coming out. And you're like, oh, fucking hell. Here we go. Yeah, I, then, I'm like that as well. If I see one coming out. So that's why I suppose I just I would only use an instrument if I if, if there's a musical joke there, like if there's a joke that needs music, I suppose. But you you sprung a what the hell? It was it looked like a mandolin, but it wasn't a mandolin. It was what? Did you oh, yeah. It? That was probably a Washburn uh, Rover travel guitar, yeah. No, uh, this wasn't. This was definitely. Uh, oh, was this a kind was of a, concave a, looking yes, thing? Yes, it was. Yeah. It was ethnic. Oh, yeah. Was it a that's... sitar or something strange? It was. No, I do play air sitar. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, those were the days. Going to the Ravi Shankar gigs. Um, no, but, uh, yeah, I forget the name of that. It's, it's like. Uh, uh, I'll I'll remember that it's a special type of guitar. It's just both of the ones I have are basically they're miniature uh, in terms of the body, you know, that, that produces the sound, but the actual fret length is the same as a normal guitar. Oh, okay, right. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the amount of frets you have and everything is normal guitar frets, but it's just handier for traveling and putting up in the luggage compartments of of, of you know planes and coaches and stuff because you so look swankier handier. too though when you when you turn up and everybody else you know would may have a guitar and you've got this thing it's like yeah yeah I, well it I gives don't... me an opportunity to say i want to i'll just want to play a little guitar now and then you get <laughs> <it>. <laughs> the you sent me on the the art oh, because that's what i love about you you're just there's a you know you understand the silliness of it all you know, because you yeah. can take comedy can ironically can take itself very fucking seriously, can't it? Like, yeah, it can. I don't. Yeah, I probably I don't really like to get very um, connected to an audience. Really, I just want them to laugh. Yeah. And to kind of enjoy wordplay and stuff like that and stupid puns and all that kind of thing. Um, 
and I'm quite shy, I suppose. I don't really like to reveal too much about myself. I, like I, when I started comedy, I only did characters because I like, I can relax if I'm being someone else, but I couldn't be myself. Well, where did you start then? Was it in the international? Or where did you where did you give it a crack? Uh, yeah, well, myself and Joe Rooney. Well, I was doing. Joe was in a band called Guernica. And I used to do support uh, or MC for their gigs. And I would just start started like telling, you know, jokes or doing characters. I'd be a character MC and introduce the band then. And this is like before there was a comedy scene. It was like in right. the Baggett and places like that. And um, then Guernica broke up and I was saying to Joe, you're like the funniest guy I know. You, you know, you should do comedy uh, with me. And so we started doing like things like that like we 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 were mc kind of comedians for uh, a gig in mcgonagall's once uh with fugazi and therapy were the two bands right and we were kind of sandwiched <laughs> in between them and we it was like a thrash metal gig so we have all these or we had all these diddly idol uh piss take songs and we, but we had to do like thrash metal versions of them and I remember Joe got 50p. This is back in the pounds and pennies days, uh, punts and pennies. Joe got someone through 50p from the back of the crowd and it hit Joe right in the eye. And fair play to him, he soldiered on and we, we finished the gig and all. But it was like we were getting pelted with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what, yeah. what, what were, you, were you doing parodies of? Diddly Eye songs? Yeah, parodies like, uh, you know, Ferdy Wack Diddly Diddle. Um, the mucky mud. So, like, one of them was like, uh, Well, me father was a potato till he went to America, where he got a job as a bag of chips and a local takeaway. Well, Father McPenty said to me, he Get us a, slow for, a loaf of bread, five of father's cabbage and tea, and a slice of old flour at his head. All in the mucky mud, all in the mucky mud, all in the mucky, 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 mucky mud, all in the mucky mud, all in the mucky mud, all in the mucky mud. Yeah. Well, God bless the man that opens us up and fixes what's inside. Or else be God, I never found out it's me father that I fright. So it's no more down the hairy glen and up at the crack of dawn, throwing a donkey across the lip. Beyond a frosty man, all in the monkey man. It just went, they went on like that. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that so much. I didn't mean to go on so long there. No, I, just came I, back to... <laughs> I was enjoying that so much. I was like, this is ridiculously brilliant. I want to see did more, stuff more like of that. this. And then we we didn't really know what to do. Like, we didn't know what comedy was meant to be like or anything. So we did that and we'd have then silly sketches and interviews and then adverts, you know, like quick little adverts <laughs> in between. Oh, you, you have to tell me what your adverts were. Um, okay. Um, tired, lonely, depressed, fuck off. With fuck off airlines, you can fuck off to anywhere in the world for only 29p. <laughs> Still like that, fuck off. And uh, what was another one? Uh, uh, Le uh, uh, only four corners in your room come to corners and corners for more corners and better value that's corners and corners just around the corner <laughs> sick of your shoes why not get a new pair at Lacey's the shoe shop Lacey's the shop for shoes buy two get one free but like we'd be doing them and we'd be mixing the words between each other so I'd be going like buy two and he'd go get one and I'd go free you know like so brilliant very quick fire stuff you know, because we'd be we'd be dividing out the lines and all that. It's a bit, <clears throat> pity, pity you didn't get that, you know, to get it down in on tape, as they would say, you know, or at least get it. Like if you can remember that song like you did just off that, be no harm now that you have the technology because you'd be able to do it back and forth and really with Zoom at this stage, like without actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have some of them, I think, from like Nighthawks and stuff like that. Oh, Nighthawks. Christ, yeah. I remember Nighthawks. Yeah, that was... Yeah, we did that, and then yeah, we did a lot of stuff in the international in the early days with with trellis and all, you know. Yes, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And we did Edinburgh, but we had a terrible shite uh, couple of gigs in Edinburgh, and did I not, <laughs> I knocked it on the head after that, and uh, went and uh, you know, Joe, Joe uh, went solo, and I yeah, I kind of stopped doing comedy for a while, and then I just sort of drifted back into it because no, nothing else I found out I wasn't good at anything else <laughs> <laughs> isn't that a fright when you find yeah. that out it's like oh back I go so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> what um, why, like was there was there a family of you like are you the outcast or are you kind of an arty family or what was the crack 
A fem oh no, yeah, no, my uh dad would be very serious fella, very strict and yeah, not very not a very funny man at all. <laughs> and <laughs> Which my mum was quite funny. funny. Like. I think my mum told me once she used to do Elvis impressions in school. So I probably get it from my mum, I'd say, the 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 need to perform. Uh, although I don't feel the need to perform as much as as I used to, I suppose. I think I I used to just like acting, like being being a character. Yeah, 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 thing, yeah. And and writing for that kind of thing. I suppose there's nearly as in a way that's nearly you could argue that it's more creative that you had to put in the groundwork, build him up, and then actually work your character out. Like rather than literally just going, "Hey, how's it going? Uh, what about airplanes?" You know. Yeah, yeah. Straight like into I, it, like. I had a few characters in the early days. Uh, like I had a guy called Barney Gunge. He was like a, a last American tourist. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I did that for a while. And then I did a guy called Feckin' Egypt, um, who was just, you know, he just would take the blame for everything. I'm such a feckin' Egypt. What am I like? Oh my God. And yeah, you know, <laughs> one of those type of guys. And yeah, just, uh, I didn't do stand up for a long time. I just did characters. Um, and because I, I hated the sound of my own voice, like when I just I'm talking like this, I, I don't mind it now. It's coming but, from the, the voiceover artist, everybody. That I know, <laughs> yeah, it's so <laughs> ironic, like, isn't it? <laughs> well, because I used to, I actually had to hypnotize myself, like you know, uh, make a tape saying, I love the sound of my voice. You did my not, voices. I did, yeah, did to, you? To, yeah, and you and I listened to it again and again, like you have a sort of a script and you, you adapt it to yourself, like to what the way you would say it. but it's basically like i think i got it online or something it was you know how to how to be confident in your own voice if you hate your voice or whatever that kind of thing um that's and brilliant yeah, so I, everybody I hates write, their own voice that's a great yeah, yeah that's a great exactly, trick yeah i wrote this thing and i used to just keep listening to it like i love the sound of my voice uh i'm very relaxed when i'm speaking and all this kind of stuff you know and it did sink in but it didn't really uh sit you know I didn't notice any effect with the comedy, but I started getting a lot more voiceovers afterwards. Really? Uh, probably, yeah, just as a side, like a spin-off. Kind of well, you thing. do, and fairness, you do have a lovely voice. Like, oh, thank you. No, it is. So do you. I know I don't. <laughs> Mine sounds like a pig shouting up an exhaust pipe. I know what I sound like. <laughs> like I've just accepted it. That's what it is. It's not a case of loving it. It's like just accepting it. I you know, know. There's no such thing as a bad voice, though, really. Like, I find all voices, all accents and voice is interest like really fascinating like i love i love i'm kind of known for doing accents i suppose like i do mm. a lot of animation stuff so i you know you'd often get projects where you're playing five or six different characters so you have to change the accent brilliant the tones of voice the ages of the characters and everything so it all has to sound like it's all different people doing it yeah because um, that's long drives with john Caleri, like and just talk and Honestly, I'm fascinated by by accents. And Ireland is so unbelievably a rich tapestry of the changes. Like, we, Yeah, for such a small country, oh, there's a huge variety. Like we, we live near Bray and it has to be one of the funniest, strangest accents. Like people do impressions of, of Katie Taylor and they think, well, that's a one off. It's not. Yeah. So many people sound like her. There's kind yeah. of, I'm not fully sure if I'm from Dublin or am I actually a wake I lived in Port Arlington, Port for about five years and you know well like while our two boys were very small and then we and you know we were just starting to think god you know one day they're going to be coming in going mommy daddy mommy daddy <laughs> <laughs> there's a heifer on the main street you know <laughs> like no, we, okay let's move back to dublin <laughs> but that's very that's racist borderline right i'm a racist yeah I, well look but, it, it is. It, I I sh I absolutely share your views. I don't know. We're 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 moving soon enough back to Tipperary, back to South Tipperary. We're just kind of a, it's kind of this accent. This is what it sounds oh, that's, like. That's that's you know, a nice like, accent. Yeah, you can kind of get around with it, like you know. The Midlands is very flat. It can be very, very flat, flat accent, you know. And, and they they, they, like... they drop uh, they drop all because we uh, we also prior to our son being born, we were living in uh, kind of awfully Kildare, the okay. trifecta of uh, me, the awfully Kildare. And, right. the and mother of God, I, I, I actually did a bit about being on stage and just going there are some accents that you just you can do nothing with. Like, you know, yeah. professionally, you probably get segregated as a result of your accent. So, <laughs> and, and I remember I was in this queue at a petrol station and this woman, she was on the phone behind me talking to somebody. And she was flicking through a wedding magazine because we we're right yeah. by the, the rack of, of magazines. And she was going, oh, yeah, what page is it? 
and she'd been directed by the woman to pick up on the other line to pick up whatever go to whatever page and give her her view yeah. on whatever dress it was she went, oh just oh, yeah here we go page six to three yeah 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 she got to the page she went oh jeez god it's very sophisticated and i went <laughs> well madam i have to tell you <laughs> the irony in how you just said the word sophisticated is <laughs> fucking incredible so no t's in the middle of words they do not exist computers yeah, yeah. and peter yeah and so many accents in between i remember one time we went to look at a house in i think it was like rathdrum kind of near avoca right yeah Somewhere. yeah and uh so i'd been talking on, and you know the way like you're really embarrassed if you don't know if someone is a man or a woman on the phone. <laughs> I've been talking to this the state agent. <laughs> and uh, all the fucking time, man. <laughs> yeah. And the estate agent, I, I said, okay, so we'll uh, I'll meet you just uh, at the, that shop just down from the house. And um, <laughs> um, what's your name anyway? And uh, the estate agent said, uh, yeah, I'm Leslie. And, oh, no. Uh, yeah, I'll see you there at the house at four o'clock. And uh, so when we got there, it was this little weird Lester Pickett looking uh, <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> but like really like uh, with a really kind of gnarled looking face and massive ears, huge ears. And like really kind of uh, Did you go to fucking Narnia or something? Where did you end yeah, up? Was, like the, oh yeah. He we, sounds we, magical, like. Well, uh, let me tell you. Uh <laughs> when you, we we lived in a house called Narnia in Port Arlington, actually. That no was, way. That was the only the first house we got, and we couldn't afford Dublin, so I drove out to Kildare and I was gonna look in Kildare, and then I said, oh, fuck it, I'll keep driving. And I kept looking in like in the buy and sell, and there's more and more houses further out you went, Mon Monastery Heaven or Monster Heaven, as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> and then next one on was Port Arlington, which had all the train links into town because that's yeah. the main junction. So you get like 15 trains in and out a day. So that sounded good. And uh, we got a tiny little house uh, with a massive garden. So I thought this is a bit like Narnia. You go into a yeah. cupboard and then you've got a huge garden. And uh, yeah, so we called it Narnia just because it said Narnia there. But so anyway, it, this is in, back in Rathdrum when we met <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> and, Leslie showed us around this this uh, house here. Now come on here and look around the house. Here you go. And we still couldn't work out if it was a man or a woman the whole time we were with Leslie. And we never asked in the end. But I think it was a man. I think it was a man. But it was a very small, wizened man with a very high voice and very yeah, uh, like um, gargoyly kind of features. <laughs> and we just decided not not to go any further with that house. <laughs> but um, oh, yeah, good. I mean, most people in Wicklow and Arklow are lovely. We we for a while, for a good while, we had a holiday home out in, in Silver Strand in Wicklow. And that was great. Like the town of Wicklow is lovely. Wicklow is lovely. And just Arklow gets a little bit more whinier, but there's more services there. So yeah, you've got yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you got the cinema, swimming pool and everything. Well, the swimming pool in Wicklow. But you've got nice shopping centres and stuff in Arklow. So it's kind of like, you know, you're going between the accent and the the price, house prices. Yeah, it's a cruel toss-up. Like. You would be pulled out of it. But that's, I mean... Not to any of our Wicklow listeners, not to, to do them. It just shows there's plenty of like uh, that. There's plenty of accents out there. Like I say, this is my accent from down home, but there are some lads. Like I don't know if you have, do you remember? Do you remember that video years ago? It was kind of circulating. It was before. It was before like Don Believable Threaten came on board. It was a guy commentating on a foot on a Gaelic football match, and he was just okay. fucking and blinding as a commentator. Oh, and this had never been done before, and he was kind yeah, of. Yeah. Well, this guy is from where I'm from, like, and if you heard that yeah. accent, it's, you know, it's the most ridiculous. It's hilarious, but yeah. you could never, you would never take, you would never be somebody's solicitor with this accent. And that, right. that is a lot of, like, my father kind of has that accent, if you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Will, how's it going? Oh, sure, I know. Yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, relax. That's like a, yeah, that's like a sketch we did for, on the Colin O'Regan, the Colin O'Regan wants a word. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's brilliant. And, and Sharon did a, a few sketches on that. One of them was uh, like uh, that there should be more equality in in broadcast uh, about 
what people sound like. So you'd ha- there was one where Sharon was a doctor and I'm the patient and I'm like, so what do you think it is? And she's like, well, I tell you now, right? It's not very good looking good for you. Like it's all shattered and all in there. And, you know, just flip over there and have a look and you'll help. <laughs> So it's just like why why don't why can't we have doctors portrayed like you know uh, by people of all backgrounds <laughs> and that's, solicitors as well you know there's all those kind of gen the stereotypical kind of um, middle class roles reversed but it's very funny they kind of did that with Channel Four though didn't they like especially their like their continuity announcers and stuff it yes. used to be very posh and then all of a sudden oh yeah they had like some bloke so like, Sean Bean coming up next. On yeah, Channel yeah. 4. You know, you know, so they got, got very regional, like. Let's find out what's happening on the news. Uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> the news readers should be like that. Really. I think they should be. Like, you take them, <laughs> you probably take them more seriously, or at least it'd make yeah. it a bit more jovial. Like, if some fella, like some mad one of the Healy Rays offspring, like, turns up, and, hello, yeah. Christ on my say, do it <laughs> yeah. so, You know, actually had him present the yeah. God, God in heaven. God in heaven sent down rain upon you know you take yeah. I think you take it with the weather serious. man yeah 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 <laughs> yeah but you did because think... sorry go on shoot, shoot away no I think we did we actually did one of them one of the ones on the Carmel Regan show was a news one as well and it was very funny it was all it's kind of like that more like Dublin heads doing the news um yeah and are you, but are you are you a dub because you have you have a very nice accent like uh well uh yeah my mom is from Cabra. Uh, Kilala Road in Cabra and my dad is from Sri Lanka but they met in London so I grew up in in South London uh, originally ah, right. I was always coming over for holidays to Ireland and then they got divorced when I was about 11 so I was over here a good bit then like for really long summer holidays and stuff and then and my uncles were quite uh, my uncles were my own age because she, right. she came from a huge family uh, one of them actually I think was young, younger than me but they were real tough like they were real heads like and they kept going what 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 are you saying what the fuck are you taking the piss or whatever <laughs> and, like, and like, so I aggressive heard, like with the, with the yeah yeah I kind of got it beaten out of me and then I, I came to live here permanently when I was about 17 but um because I just loved getting beaten up by my uncles but uh <laughs> no they were very funny because they like you know and, and it's amazing the first when you first come to Ireland and you hear like who's your what's starting with your outland your outland <laughs> <laughs> what sorry what sorry uh, <laughs> outland, outland. uh you know uh, uh give a lend it or I'll lend, I'll lend you that I know borrow you that I that was yeah, the borry, one I'll borrow you that you give us a lend of it and I'll borrow a and uh, yeah, get up here with that, and all that kind of stuff was magic to my ears, like because I just I don't know. I, I yeah, I, I, I rarely find people who are who listen as t- as closely and c- try to depict it because I was trying to depict a guy that I met, and not so long ago he's working at a building site near us here, and just every so often I'd salute him. I just thought he was the most interesting. He looked like a praying mantis when he walked, even. He was yeah. the skinniest human you've ever seen. He was like a white Snoop Dogg, and you could smell the weed like he was smoking it all day while drinking yeah. a can of Red Bull. Insane. And he was from um, like a uh, Darndale direction, you know. Yeah. I just I, I I had to talk to him because he was fucking fascinating. And when he's Paulo, he just he wouldn't get his lips out of the way of the words because he yeah. It, and it was almost like I won't be told by the man how to enunciate things correctly. And had he yeah. had he just you know gotten his fucking own lips out of the way of of the words coming out of his mouth, he would sound he would dictate properly. But he wasn't. He was like, yeah. No, 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 and he was fucking open the oh no. Oh, is that a yeah. damn hit? And you're like, dude, you are making a bigger job of this than you need to. Honestly speaking, yeah. it's way easier than that. Like, <laughs> but yeah, do you ever find yourself like, um, you know, if you knew them, you probably wouldn't be bothered talking. But because their accent or the way they talk is so interesting, you keep prompting someone to keep just talking. Yeah. Just because you just want to listen to more of the way they say things. I remember... I think one time I was in a taxi and this guy, he kept agreeing with himself all the time. And I found it fascinating. He was like, <laughs> it was like you know, uh, he was going, yeah. And then they, uh, you know, they they, they didn't have a, a, any on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were, you know, they were, they were trying to sort it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just fascinated. Like, you know, things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just want to hear more of it. Like, yeah. this is amazing. Like, he doesn't need anybody. It there's just, there's a or there's a, you know that that absolute rubbish talk that people do like that I, I think he was he'd be a rel like he'd be a relative of my a brother-in-law of mine I don't know was he an uncle or something and he was giving me a spin into Cork City one time and 
We talked about absolutely fucking nothing for 25 minutes, but never stopped. He never stopped talking, if you know what I mean. There was nothing. There was no substance to it at all. But I found it fascinating that he could get through his day saying things like, oh, sure, no, that's more of it. (laughs) Say say not now and keep saying it. Sure, that's it. No, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's like 20 odd minutes of this. Muck. There's a circuit that most people have where they sort of vet what they're saying and some, you know, before it goes out. So there might be a little gap, but some people don't have that. Like they've they've bypassed the circuit and they just keep going. <laughs> they don't need to any. Yeah, no, no prompting needed. I yeah. found um, I found I was reading your, your book is fascinating. Your book is. Oh. Abs- oh. It's, Thank it's you. <laughs> it is a joy. Do you know what? And knowing what you told, like in the, the way you said it beforehand, because you wouldn't know, you know, you pick up a book, you think, well, this is somebody who's clearly trying to write something very seriously. And this is that, you know, it, this is deep in their heart when they wrote this. Like, and when you kind of sent on the review, <laughs> the review, you're like, oh no, I tried to write a shite book, Tom. I tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tr- I made it, went out of my way. And as you're reading it, knowing that, that's what makes it hilarious. Yeah. Is because you know, it's like the descriptions of, <laughs> or there were big, long, lovely legs. So you know, or yeah, or, yeah. or if, if that really was her name, and there's no need to say that, or if that was, yeah. in, you know, and there no, yeah, like, well, there's no need in half the things that are said in the descriptions, like America, the states. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just trying to. Uh, I suppose amuse myself with the the whole act of writing uh, and 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 performing as well because I do read it out sometimes and and it's kind of fun. like we do we uh, Barry and myself kind of do a thing where he interviews me as Saul Tillich and I read bits from the book and you know and we did um, the Boris and Ossery, uh Literary Festival we finished did you? we closed you, that Barry Murphy bef- yeah. Yeah, Barry uh, was Gunter interviewing. Oh, ah, Gunter. brilliant, and, uh, brilliant. Yeah, so, and I'm this really serious, come across really serious, because people are there all day watching these really serious authors being really serious about their yes. work. So it's a big relief for them at the end of the day to have just this awful, awful writer uh, who thinks his writing is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> reading, out, reading out this stuff that is just... Uh, really bad <laughs> and i just thought yeah there's no one trying to write bad books they're all trying to write good ones so yeah, yeah. that's the beauty of it and i was actually i was reading it and i was going this is on par with 50 shades of gray it was so badly written i was like Did, yeah if paul isn't well, careful here somebody's going to make a fucking movie of this and he'll be raging yeah. he'll be raging he's like no this is what i wanted to know <laughs> i could read you out uh, yes oh please it, this now is, this is uh, is that yes, coming out yeah, perfect. As, yeah. as a mirror image, it's a mirror image in my. No, no, it's not. It's 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 okay. as as I see. It's a Saul Tillock. This is Chicago yeah. Blues. Chicago Blues available on Amazon and Kindle. Oh, uh, I would be putting this in the show notes oh, for people to, to click through. <laughs> don't, don't you don't you worry. I'll just get people started off with the wait um, wait the, our appetite. The start of the book of this incredible tome, <laughs> chapter one, the shadowy shadow. <laughs> A howly type of wind was blowing like mad through the calm, still air of Chicago town in America, the States. Goldy rays of silver sunlight bounced reflectively off the shiny blue ripples on top of the water in the lakes, ponds, canals, and other various water features all over Chicago town, America, the States. In one particular place, to be specific, a couple was walking along the street on an otherwise empty boulevard. Otherwise empty, that is, except for them. They were Jake Fritter and Amy Gladley, if that was her real name. (laughs) Tall, attractive, handsome Jake Fritter, who was really, really good looking with high cheekbones and everything like a male model, even though he wasn't one because he was an undercover private detective, was leading the amazingly sexy, long-legged, nice-faced, lovely-haired Amy Gladley, if that was her real name, by one of her two hands, towards his high-class, ultra-expensive beachfront condo in the center of Chicago town. Chicago town, city of hope, fear, anger, joy, and courage, and 2.736 million people, each of them with a story to tell. 17 stories, some of them, others only two. So if we say on average 11 stories, we're talking roughly 30 million stories. 31 million tops. And this was theirs, brackets, Jake and Amy's. Uh, will I go on? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God, I'm enjoying this so much. 
<laughs> Come on in, Jake said in his deep, manly Chicago drawl at the main door of his apartment block. And she said, okay, and she did, and they went in. <laughs> they had had, 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 had enough of the Windy City, its jazz music, its famous museums of science and history, its proximity to the Great Lakes, and its high crime stats, short for statistics. <laughs> They had just met in a bar just around the corner and just liked each other just immediately because they were both just looking for someone just like that. He had backed into her front while looking the other way and spilt her drink and bought her another one. That's how they met. I don't want to give anything else away. Um, but, but actually, the whole, chap the whole first chapter is available on the... When you click on the link, uh, it's like, have a look free inside. You know the way they say you can yeah, have a look yeah, yeah. inside? So you can see the whole first chapter there. Please tell me you're um, going to do an audio, an audio reading of that for people. I am, yeah. I'm going to do the audio book. Oh, because well. the, 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 yeah, I read that and it, I did, I did it a total injustice inside my head because I was laughing and chuckling. But the fact that you just performed that was <laughs> <laughs> one. It was, it was her hands was to fit the book, and I lost it <laughs> when he held her hand. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah listen i'll send you a copy anyway i'll send you uh i, I want a signed copy too signed yeah. please by uh, not by paul but i want to do that. Oh, you, you you i'll send you a paperback uh version of it and then you can uh when you meet me next i'll sign it beautiful but uh yeah i can do that as the author you're allowed to send author copies oh fantastic yeah. That's I, 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 you know what? That's what more the world needs more of is the the beautiful that you the, your mission from the outset was to write a silly book. Was yeah. like did, like did you have because there's so much there's actually an awful lot in a lot of sentences where you have to, did you have to go back over and go I can actually add more stupid stupidity to this moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean Barry kind of mentored me a bit because uh, I just was doing it just on like you know on you know the notes thing on your phone and I was yeah. just doing stuff like like you know swathes of it and uh he was going oh it's like just being constantly hit with a wet fish <laughs> like and you, you, the more of that you do the better because yeah it's just it becomes really annoying to read but you know for for a reader to read it becomes quite annoying uh <laughs> but in a in an addictive way i think the, yeah the, the some of the reviews are yeah. absolutely fantastic as well oh yeah like yeah uh, i couldn't put it down because I never yeah. picked it up. <laughs> well, these are, some of these I think are a bit harsh. Uh, Tillock has single hate. Tillock has single-handedly created a new genre: illiterature. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Walker, the Tipperary Tribune. <laughs> uh, a real page burner. Andrea Swanson, West Boston Book Review. And a one-word review here: egregious. Manly Tusk, the Essex Observer. <laughs> Best sellers aren't meant to be this good. They're meant to be much, much better. <laughs> Nick Lender, The View. That's from. I couldn't put it down because I wouldn't pick it up. That's from <laughs> Brian O'Brien, The Literary Supplement. Books like this only come along once in a generation. Thank God. Layla Tyler, Hooper's Weekly. <laughs> and I'll do one last one. In a world of average writers, Tillock stands head and shoulders below them all. <laughs> <laughs> guide a bit harsh but honest honest review yeah no, that's you know that's what you want i'm telling you there's people gonna buy it off the back of this just because we've gone into such a strange world at the minute now where i don't think i think anything is what it yeah. used to be and everything's kind of got a bit sideways i think people would want to go properly silly yeah i mean there is a story in it i mean uh, one thing i learned when i was writing just trying to write as much nonsense as i could about actual characters is that you need to have it needs to be embedded into an there needs to be a bit of structure something has of course to yeah okay right yeah, yeah. so there's lots of baddies in it and lots of sex um lots of a few good sex scenes oh and great some, and some serious gun violence and some knife violence as well did you go and full jilly cooper when it came to like the the sex scenes uh, well, I could I could give you an example of a sex scene. Oh, lovely! Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is from a chap this chapter is called "Sex Frenzy," <laughs> uh, chapter seven. Uh, okay, she felt his hot breath on her face because he was breathing on it, and the inside <laughs> of his lungs were several degrees warmer than her face skin. 
and all their pent up feelings got unpented, releasing pheromones <laughs> and sexual emotions and the lust link of their mutual past that they both had 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 flared up again, like one of those giant matches, you know, the fireplace ones. And they started tearing off each other's clothes like wild koalas in a sex <laughs> frenzy in the bargain bin of a clothes shop. Her lips were everywhere, not just on her face, but all over his body. And his hands were all over hers, brackets her body, not her hands. And their legs were intertwined like plaited hair, if you imagine flesh colored plaques with knees. She pulled him into her, not only <coughs> just his penis. They made love in spasmodic spurts of unadulterated adult abandonment, interspersed with refreshment breaks and light reading. Eventually, it was all over, and they just lay there banjaxed on the floor, panting like Labradors in a heaving pile of two bodies, exhausted, not doing it anymore. So that's, that's the kind take, of Take steam and bow. Oh, my lo- I, 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 I don't, don't even know how to continue. I might feel like I need a cigarette after that. That's incredible. Yeah, because, I mean, that's one thing I find, even in very good books that are supposed to be steamy, that they're not really... Uh, as steamy as they could be and I wanted to to make sure it was a, a stimulating sexual experience for the reader well, you definitely definitely did that yeah my my mind is just blown after that that's incredible <laughs> you almost feel like you're there in between the couple yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> like a sticky sandwich yeah. you know oh good Jesus Christ and I always get such a uh, such a kick when I see when I'm watching telly and all of a sudden out of nowhere um, and start binge watching a show called Informer the other night on on Netflix and lo oh, and be a whole I get such a kick <laughs> when I know somebody I'm like hey, hey, it's Paul and it yeah, was yeah. <laughs> so Paul how, how did how did that come about because that was a that was a squeak gig to get I mean you you feature in every bit of it like you, you get a that was a great role I mean, yeah, granted, well, there's a total Irish touch there where you're pretty much drunk to the whole thing, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, that was in the contract. <laughs> I, can't, I can't act sober. Um, yeah, uh, well, it's, uh, I suppose, because, like, it, it, when I was, uh, my my favourite comedy that I, for, for performing myself, is always characters. And that's yeah. probably... I think I always liked acting, you know, and I did. I had done a few plays here and there, and um, I did a sketch show called Stew where I play loads yes. of characters. So that I was a real. Stew. Yeah, that was a great training for me uh, in terms of of acting, you know, uh, as in character, you know, in, in lots of different characters. But like, just uh, you'd get more time at it. You know, yeah, doing doing a show like that and then I did a film called Halal Daddy with um, Deirdre Colum O'Kane Meany. and Colin Meany yeah yeah yeah, yeah, Meany, yeah 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 so that was good and there was a good few Asian actors on that and they were saying you should try and get an agent in London because they're like there's a lot more work there for people that look like us you know right so I was like, yeah, OK, uh, can I talk to your agent, please? <laughs> and, uh, so I didn't hear Anton for ages. And uh, but then one of the Art Malik was really lovely and he wrote a lovely email to his agent. And so I made an introduction and then I kind of was hammering on their door for a good while. And eventually they agreed to have a meeting with me, probably just to get rid of me. Yeah. And uh, it went well. And the first tape that they sent me to do a self tape, I was the informer and I got, I got the part. Um, actually, well, that wasn't the part I got. The part I got was the, the undercover guy, you know, there's an undercover guy in it. With the bad leg. Yes. Right. And I, that's the part I went for, but then he got it. And then, so I thought, ah, oh, well, and then a f- couple of weeks later, they said, we'd like to try you for the dad part, the father of the main guy. So I was like, wow, yeah, brilliant. And uh, yeah, so that, that worked out well. Um, and it's the kind of thing that where if you get work, then you kind of get more work out of it. Yeah, as a result, no doubt. But I mean, it's a bloody good show, like, too, you know, that's... Oh, yeah, it's I mean, it, the nominated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, I, I and again, because I don't watch an awful lot... You just don't get around to watching an awful lot of television. But when you do, it's, it's and you land on a show like that. It's like, oh, sweet as a nut. And then it makes it all the sweeter when you know somebody in it. It's like, ah, 
you know, because you're in yeah, it with yeah, him yeah. a small bit, like, aren't you? You're kind of going, oh, well, you know, it's, it's Paul, you know, I, Paul, 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 yeah, yeah. Paul, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good because it's a good thriller. Like, it's a good, you, good whodunit kind of. We we haven't actually, because episode six, the final episode is, we're watching it yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, I, I wouldn't give out in the way, don't worry. Brilliant, brilliant. Because you, am I right? Did you, did you play like a, an Amazonian chief or something in Father Ted one time? Or did I dream, did I dream of Paul Tylak? No, I did. Yeah, I was in. <laughs> I was in two episodes. In the Christmas episode as a roadie, and I just go, ah, oh, yeah, that's a bit. Uh, it's getting mad feedback on that, Sean. Can you take it down a nuts? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was like for the the lovely girls show. Oh, the lovely girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, on that Christmas episode, and then the other one was the one that you're talking about was kicking Bishop Brennan up the arse. Yes, um, yes, at the, yes. At the start of that, Father Ted has a nightmare that he's being thrown into a volcano by two Amazon warriors. Uh, and I'm one of them. And he says, ah, here, lads, lads, come on. Let, let's just talk about this. Could, would you not consider uh, converting to Catholicism? And I just go, in a real Dublin accent, I go, yeah, well, we would, but we don't really agree with your stance on abortion. <laughs> <laughs> We just fuck him into the volcano <laughs> and he wakes up then. So, but do you do like the is the big the big thing at the I suppose of recent times is it voiceover? Because when you look at your IMDb, like you've done a fortune of animation, which must be fun too. Like, is it because yeah, the range you the must be allowed to yeah. do with, with animation? Like, yeah, you definitely are allowed to be a lot more creative and mess around with characters because. Like it's not like when when you you know come on board with a film project or TV where the director has a very definite idea of the character of what they want to do. Generally, with animation, the directors are very open to. They give you a steer on it, but they're open to to see what they they want you to try different voices and try different right you know, yeah yeah kind of characters and sort of impressions and stuff like that or whatever you are you know a mixture of an impression and a character kind of thing. And uh, so it's a lot more, it's, it's a lot of fun to do. And obviously you don't have to learn lines because you can just read the lines. Of course. So, yeah. I yeah. didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's great. And what's yeah. the most, what, what, what have you done? What's the most recent one? Have you been able to do ones in lockdown? Cause you obviously have your studio there, which is, yeah, yeah. you're, you're cooking yeah. nicely in, but just, <laughs> but it looks like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul is having to have flap his door every so often behind just to Get let some air, air conditioning going here. Um, yeah, I'm doing one at the moment called Alva and the Trolls, which is by Cavalier Productions. And that's a great, uh, uh, you know, lots of different characters in that. Um, and they're all very different characters as well. So, that's yeah, I like doing like, you know, very different characters in a thing because it's more of a challenge. Uh, there's one kind of Joe, he's, a, he's like a Joe Pesci kind of character. Yeah, yeah, hey, come on, what are you doing? What, what's going on here? Get out of here. And then there's another guy who's almost a bit like Neil from The Young Ones. Oh, I love it. Yeah, love it. Yeah. He's going, well, I don't really know if we should do that. And uh, then there's another guy who's kind of the mayor of the town. He's like, well, we, we, we should really try to make sure that everybody gets what they want from this. You know, so there's all these different uh, kind of, uh, it's challenging to do, but it's real fun. I can imagine, yeah, because your your inner child comes out, doesn't it? Because that's yeah, what, exactly, that's yeah, really what it's all. Because immediately, because you like, I suppose even doing something like Informer, where you're having to be, it is a serious show, even though you know what I mean. Obviously, you're, you're the dad, and you're you're almost the lightness. You're the light in the room, like you're, the, you know, mm. there's there's lightness yeah. when it comes to you, because like oh, still turning, you know, the world or whatever is still turning, and but I'm half pissed, so relax, yeah. you know, you're a bit well, more. It's, yeah, I mean, I did, that was quite a serious show, and. Yes. It did need light relief, like it, not that it needed it, but the the writing was so good in it that you could have a lot of lighter moments in yeah. the real tense kind of overall kind of vibe of it, and a lot of that came and it sort of very much humanizes the Asian family in it and makes you realize they're just like us, you know. Everyone yeah. is is very similar. They're London Asian. They're just like you know any Londoners. You know, living and the, in the flats and and the accent you went for there was that. Did you decide? Well, this is the one. Well, this is one I've heard before. I'm going to go for that one. Like, uh, yeah. Well, I kind of, 
I suppose I researched a bit. Like he's kind of he's sort of from Hackney, and uh, yeah, he's like I kind of try to. I, I suppose it's an amalgam. It's always an amalgam of different things. You do a lot of research, like YouTube, and well, I yeah. do anyway. I, I try and l- listen to as much people uh, from the background and the the locality of where I'm supposed to be playing, and then I just sort of add in a bit of probably just natural humor to it. I yeah, suppose. yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I was trying to be serious, uh, and it ended up being a sort of a, a comical character. So well, it's just like my writing, my books. <laughs> I try to write serious books, and people read them and go, "Yeah, you should write for kids." <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, I suppose, from my point of view, I'm watching and go, "Well, that's Paul Tylek right there." You know what I mean? Like, he, yeah, he, he well, definitely that's... didn't do no more dirt. You know what I mean? He's... <laughs> 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 but that's the thing as well like it's uh i think i've been lucky in that i haven't had hardly any pro i don't think of any profile in in britain so it's not like you're not uh, people are prepared more to take you seriously because they don't know they don't associate you too much with comedy yes i know yeah, for yeah. a lot of comedians that can be a, a if they're really well known it can be very tough for them to get if they're interested in acting, it's, it can be tough for them to fulfill that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could see that, all right. can be kind of labelled a bit. I by, love it. By, not just by the audience, but by directors and casting people just don't oh, take yeah. it seriously. Well, so you know yourself, like, quite often you could be looked over because they just can't see beyond the fact that, oh, well, this yeah. guy used to tell jokes, even though, you know, it could be, yeah. you might be the greatest in the world, that they just can't see beyond that sometimes, like. Yeah, well, Barry told me that because he's a good mate of uh, uh, the fellow Stuart Carlin that that wrote um, Love Hate I said that at one point they were considering me for a part I, I, I heard about this a few years later you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're considering me for a, uh, like the, it wasn't even a great it was the shopkeeper where your man gets shot at the start um, oh right yeah yeah, yeah yeah and they're going ah oh, no we couldn't have him there because he's everyone knows him for comedy so and I was like well you, geez, it's only a little t- t- I could have easily done that <laughs> but you know that, that's sort I of worn, I would have worn a hat lads for fuck's sake yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you want and shades <laughs> yeah Oh yeah, well, immediately because in my and this is what it is, is by association because in my head the second you said shopkeeper it was the what had happened was in my head it went straight to the one where you were in the savage eye and oh he, right! And yeah. like savages, they're supposed to be gale gores, and they're trying to spin. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Fucking, fucking what? What do you fucking? Do? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I'm guilty of it too. As soon as you said shop, I went, yeah, what well, Paul is perfect. Yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, that's it. But it's a comedy <laughs> shop. I yeah, t- yeah. Do you know what? I've taken up. Do you have any more of that glorious book that you would dare read me before? Because I oh. got such a kick before we before we head away. Okay. Because that was uh, such a joy. Okay. Uh, uh, I could. Yeah. Uh, this. So uh, this is a bit where. He's um, gone to, uh, let's see. Uh, this is where he goes to the police station. Okay. Um, and he has a friend uh, who I stupidly gave a name with no vowels in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, his name is there a lot. So I, uh, well, I, I kind of deliberately did it because it, it would annoy the reader. Um, <laughs> what a tactic. And, uh, yeah. So, OK, so he's driving frantically, trying to get help to find his missing girlfriend um, and to find out who's just attacked him and all this kind of stuff. But I don't want to give too much away. But, yes. Uh, so chapter eight. Kids. <laughs> That's the name of his mate. <laughs> the rain on the windscreen was like millions of diamonds that had been polished to roundiness, halved, then glued onto curved car glass. Jake didn't care and wiped them off with a wipe of his wipers. He was driving like a madman who'd been let loose, brackets without his regular medication, in in the front part of a car. He drove over bridges and through tunnels, past pet shops and playgrounds, along cobbled country lanes, across overpasses and along freeways. He broke several red lights, maybe more, and then worried, (laughs) worried that everything was taking too long. He took a shortcut and skidded to a halt outside the police cop station. As the skid dust settled around Sarah's Mitsubishi Lancer, which luckily he'd found the keys to and knew how to drive, it revealed an old concrete window pocked red brick building, run down, dilapidated and flea riddled. 
It reminded him of the buildings he'd seen in documentaries about buildings. Except, <laughs> except this one was full of police cops. Living, breathing, fighting, jumping, yawning, sitting, typing, staring police cops. He went inside. Who are you here to see? Said an elderly female police cop woman behind the glass fronted hello counter. With a gnarled bonsai, brackets tiny Japanese tree hand, <laughs> she flicked the dust off her huge signing in book that visitors are meant to write their names down in. She handed him a pen while he answered her. He didn't like doing two things at once. So first he signed, then he handed her the pen back, then he answered, drawing himself up to his full height in feet and inches. <laughs> Officer Klismarino Kritz, he said in his deep chiseled Chicago drawl. He was trying to sound casual, but deep down inside, he felt like this was one of the most urgent types of situation you could be in. Like when you need to use the toilet, but there's someone in there and you have to wait. And <laughs> someone else says, why don't you go and pee in the lane at the back? But you can't, because it's a number two. And you don't want to tell them that, because they'll probably know that two means poo. <laughs> and who might you be? She said with one eyebrow raised and her lips curled into the lip section of a sarcastic expression. I might be Jake Fritter, he said, rebounding her attitude right back at her in return, like a squash ball from a squash tournament wall. At the mention of his name, the elderly woman's curt grumpiness suffered, softened to gruff disinterest. I'll let him know you're here, she said and then mumbled something mumbly on the phone to someone he couldn't see. <laughs> minutes later, even though it seemed much longer because the number of minutes was unspecified, she told him he could go in and go down the corridor and go left, take your first right after the photocopier and it's the second door on the right, just past the mops and the cleaning stuff. You can't miss it. <laughs> Thanks, he said. And he went that way and then he was there. He knocked... <laughs> He knocked gingerly, even though he was a brunette. Ha ha, only joking. He just knocked moderately hard. Yes, came a familiar voice. Jake went in and sat down. Well, 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 said Officer Klim Klisnrekvlekseks, <laughs> looking up from his big old untidy police cop desk. What can I do you for? Which was his police cop jokey way of saying, what can I do for you? <laughs> Jake looked at his old friend's face. Time had been good to him. He had hardly changed. You still look the same as last week, Jake said. <laughs> look, Jake, said Officer Klisenrichflix, I don't have much time before my afternoon shift, so do me a favor, hurry up, get to the point. Don't prevaricate, elaborate, or beat around the bush. Keep it short and simple. Just tell me why you're here, and tell me fast. No dilly-dallying, shilly-shallying, <laughs> messing about, or fumble-bumbling, and no time wasters, please. Jake liked his old friend's expansive directness and felt a warm glow of comradeship and chumly camaraderie. I won't go on because... Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Oh my God, that made me so happy. He knocked on the door gingerly. Only joking, it's a brunette. Like, the, yeah. how much fun you must have. Like, yeah, because it is... It, 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 well, that, I had to I, be careful with any ga actual gags. Like, I had to Oh, of course, sure, yeah, you yeah. Because it's supposed to not be funny, but... But just, what, like to see you, it's like unintentionally funny. Man. I just imagine you reading it at a festival, like with a, wearing like a, a turtleneck, you know? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. a pair of like ironic glasses, you know, yeah, not, yeah. not actually functional, proper, good, like uh, ironic glasses. Yeah, you know? yeah. Serious writer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I like this has been an absolute joy. I will, of course, uh, put and we never got to talk about the improv. The improv is, is still running, oh, isn't it? Every Monday night at nine o'clock on Zoom, like we are now. Uh, but, you know, the links are all up on Facebook, on the Comedy Improv site, Dublin Comedy Improv, and uh, on Twitter, On I think it's like Dublin Improv on Twitter. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we send up links to it every week, and it's on at 9 o'clock on Monday night. So if you're not doing anything, if you don't happen to be going to the pub, uh, you well, could... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's everybody can tune in there you and go. watch it like and you can make suggestions you know using the chat as well for which go oh, into all the brilliant. games yeah 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 
Fantastic. Pretty much everybody on the improv has been on the show at some stage <laughs> or, oh, or, or not. So you were, the, you were the last missing piece and what an absolute joy. Paul, thanks a million, man. Thank you, Tom. Good to talk to you. Cheers, dude.